Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Deriving comfort in times of crisis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this is by far one of the most powerful verses in this subject. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. O you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. This verse is amazing because it shows us how we can achieve comfort. In times of crisis, to begin with, Allah is addressing the believers. So He is saying, "O oh, you who believe, well, if I am a believer, I need to listen attentively because I'm being addressed." Allah says, "Seek assistance. You want help? Well, you can be helped by the following. Do you really want comfort in times of crisis? Well, if you do, this is what you should do. Basically, that's what Allah is telling you: Istainu, seek assistance." Through what? Through patience. You must be patient upon the tests that Allah has placed in your path. You must bear a beautiful patience. Beautiful patience means I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I have hope, I believe in Allah, I know goodness will come, I know that after the darkest hour there is always daybreak. The one who brought about that daybreak will actually bring about the daybreak in my crisis. And as much as I'm convinced that the sun is going to rise, I'm also convinced that my problem is going to end. So that is called a beautiful patience. It is calm, it is filled with contentment, with peace, with love, with lots of helping of others. But Allah warns us from that type of patience that is not really patience because it is not beautiful, it is the opposite. People become abusive, they become angry, selfish, hurtful, they start spreading panic amongst others. All that is unacceptable. Allah says, Istainu bis sabr. Seek help and assistance through a beautiful patience. You need to know Allah is there. Allah created you in the first place. He will take care of you. Don't worry. He will indeed take care of you. And He will make sure that you live your exact prescribed time on earth. It's not going to change by a fraction of a second, neither this way nor that way. So Allah is telling the believers, seek assistance through patience. And then He says, and prayer. Prayer, pray a lot, call out to Allah. Your five daily prayers, do them enthusiastically. Be excited about praying. Don't just get it over and done with, but be excited. Wash yourself thoroughly, properly for the sake of Allah. Be clean, be smart. Keep yourselves clean. When the Almighty tells you to wash yourself in ablution, you need to know there is a reason He is saying, wash your hands five times a day. There is a reason He is saying, keep yourself clean and smart. If you were to go to the bathroom, make sure that you've cleansed yourself. All this is in order to bring about a comfort in times of crisis. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ was faced with a crisis of some nature, the first thing he did, he rushed to prayer. Who are we? We are the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him. We should also be rushing to prayer. Whenever there is a crisis, for him it was not a real crisis. He knew he was the messenger of Allah. For us, we face crises, but when we rush to prayer, we will be comforted by Allah. Put your head on the ground and call out to your maker. The closest you could ever be to your maker is when you are in prostration. The closest that a slave could be to his maker is when his head is on the ground for his maker, crying to his maker, Oh my maker, help me. I need your help. Allah will respond. Allah says, you will be comforted. Seek help through patience, and prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. One might ask, well, in this verse, which is verse number 153 of Surah Al-Baqarah, why does Allah speak about patience before prayer? 
Surely prayer is more important than patience. A simple response. You require patience in order to pray. You need to actually practice that patience. You need to be strong enough to get up and pray. You need to forsake your bedding in order to pray. You need to get up at night in order to cry to Allah. The most blessed moment is actually a portion of the night known as the last third. Just before the early morning prayer, it is called the time of the Hajjud. Get up at that time when the Almighty is calling out saying, who is there, who is asking me, I can give them. Call out to him at the time. Doesn't that require a lot of patience? Doesn't that require restraint? We need to protect ourselves. We need to actually fight our sleep. Get up for the sake of Allah. So now do you see why patience is mentioned before prayer? Although prayer is a pillar of Islam, but in order to fulfill it, you're going to need patience. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer. For indeed Allah is with those who are patient. His help is with them. He is with them. His assistance is with them. And solutions are with them. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately after that, We will indeed test every one of you. The Arabic language, the word used is emphasized very, very strongly. We will definitely test every one of you. Haven't we said Allah has created us to test us from the beginning of our lives, right to the end of our lives, one after the other, test after test, just like the others. We will also be tested. Allah says, we will test you. With what? Allah says, hang on. We tell you what we will test you with. Listen to how amazing the verse is, right? So this is verse number 155 of Surah Al-Baqarah. With a little bit of fear, anxiety, You'll suffer with some anxiety, some fear. Why a little bit of fear? Because if you're a believer, the fear will never overtake you. Your faith actually overtakes the fear. So your patience will overtake the fear. Your prayer will overtake the fear. So Allah says, a little bit of fear. Remember, he's addressing the believers here. Oh, you who believe. So we will test you with a little bit of fear, anxiety, uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Will I? Will I not be affected, infected? Am I going to lose my job? Am I not? Allah says, don't worry. Bear patience. Do your best. Lay, the, lay your trust in Allah. The rest of it, Allah will take care of. So a little bit of fear. Then he says, well, ju'i, some hunger. You might not know where the next meal is going to come from. You may not have the means to reach where the food is. You might have lost a job. You don't know where you're going to pay for the meal from. You might have a sickness and you won't be able to eat certain things. A disease might spread. Anything may happen. Allah says, you know what? Fear. And then hunger. And then Loss of wealth, you may lose your property in a flood or in a tsunami, in an earthquake. May Allah never do that to us. In a war zone, to robbers, whatever it may be, may Allah protect us. Allah says it will happen. It's part of the tests we will send in your direction. We have to test. You made a profit, you will now make a loss. It's a crisis, isn't it? Well, Allah tells you to achieve comfort through patience and prayer. Bear patience. This is your test. Hasn't Allah given you so much? Well, now he's testing you. You made a profit for 10 years. Now your factory might burn down. Take it in your stride. Bear patience. Turn to Allah. Pray. Don't ever give up. Keep going. Allah will give you even more. So he says, you may lose thereafter some of your wealth. You will also lose life, your loved ones. People may die around you. Ultimately, you have to go anyway. Remember to bear patience. Bear a beautiful patience. You know, you will be gathered with them again today, one day. When a child goes out to play, the parents send the child, go and play. In the evening, we say, come back. It's now evening, come indoors. The child might cry because they were enjoying the game. But you know it is safer and better for them to be indoors. So you make it a point, you will come indoors and you go and bring them indoors. What happens to us as human beings? Allah sends us onto the earth. We started playing our games and we got too used to it. When Allah says, come back, it's now time to come back. We begin to cry. I don't want to go. 
So Allah says, you will come back, it's better for you here, and it is safer. So I will go back to Allah when he's going to call me. And subhanAllah, have you ever thought of it that way? It will bring about a lot of comfort when you put things into perspective and understand what Allah is doing. Allah sent us onto the earth for a short span of time. Okay, not to play a game, but Allah says the worldly life is, a, is an amusement and a pastime. Make sure you pray and develop your relationship with Allah while you're there. And then when you come back to Allah, you will find a lot of goodness. And when Allah calls you back, don't be upset, don't be angry. Because Allah knows it's better for you. You will lose your loved ones. You will lose life. Ultimately, you have to go. And I promise you, you may even lose your produce. Allah says, وَالثَّمَرَاتِ But then Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. Give good news to those who bear patience. And who are those who bear patience? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا Those whom when calamity or crisis strikes, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon We belong to Allah in the first place and we are going to all return to Allah. So you think of where you came from, where you are right now, where you are heading and that brings about a lot of comfort. Many of us cling to dear life although we know we have to leave it. So just embrace. Thank Allah. Do your best while you're alive. Leave behind a very good legacy. Leave behind something good. Do good for your own self and investment for the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding. May we be from among those who can bear good patience and those who say, indeed, we belong to Allah and unto Him is our ultimate return. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina